afternoon and welcome to our August Member Matters meeting. Today the focus is on supporting pre and postnatal women in dance. There's a slight change to our guests today in that unfortunately Chloe Hillier cannot be with us, but I am delighted to say that we do have the wonderful Lucy McCrudden who's going to lead this session and she's going to update on some areas um, that Chloe was going to feed back on. So Lucy is a dance entrepreneur, an advocate and founder of dancemama.org, which is a platform celebrating and inspiring parents in dance. And for 20 years, Lucy has dovetailed her own work with key positions in learning and participation with world class organisations, including The Place, Rombert and the Royal Opera House. She's an ambassador for Pippa Campaign, which is parents and carers in performing arts. She's secretariat, science scientific advisory board for the Active Pregnancy Foundation and a nominee of the inaugural AWA Women in Dance Award 2021. So I think you're going to glean lots of information from Lucy today and if you have any questions please do put them in the question and answer box and our host Mavis Saba and Lucy will endeavour to answer as many as possible for you. So I'm going to hand over to Lucy for today's session. Thank you Lucy, welcome. Thank you. And uh, crikey, what an introduction. Thank you, Louise um, and Mavis. It's a real privilege to be here and I'm so happy to be able to share kind of what's currently going on at the moment for pre and postnatal women in dance and some of the progress um, that is being made. Uh, as well as kind of highlighting a little bit about Dance Mama and our developments there. And of course, um, Chloe's work with the pregnant dancer. So I'm gonna share my uh, screen with you all and I hope you're all well um, this afternoon. We're gonna move between um, presentation and, um, and some links as well. Um, so you get a sense of um, everything that's going on at the moment. Um, so the current context really um, for pre and postnatal women in dance is slightly more improved than it has been um, in recent years. Um, and that's down to work of um, a few of my colleagues and predecessors in highlighting these issues that we're going to, to talk about soon, um, as well as um, kind of just the general culture and context in which um, dance exists and, and how we operate and views uh, towards parenting and pregnancy and, and all of those sorts of things. So really there's been quite uh, significant moves afoot in the last few years, but prior to that, it's been quite um, sporadic and um, a little bit inconsistent. And that's for the um, unfortunate usual uh, reasons that sort of uh, dip our toes into feminism um, of uh, it being obviously a female centered issue generally, um, particularly obviously for um, carrying children, but obviously being a parent uh, affects you whether <laughs> you're male or female or however you wish to identify your gender and you may not have biologically carried your children. So we, in this kind of discussion and movement um, I would say we're very much interested in supporting all types of parents but indeed for Dance Mama and to slightly uh, speak on Chloe's behalf we do focus on uh, the feminine in that way. Um, so in terms of what we've got at the moment going on, um, Chloe and I, uh, for the ISTD in particular, very recently have both written articles. Um, Chloe's written for uh, the magazine um, and I wrote an article um, back in March, which is here somewhere, um, Dance and Motherhood which was really, uh, and I'm going to start with the ISTD point first before we, we move out. And I was given the brilliant opportunity to speak to a handful of um, artists and teachers across the uh, society. I'm just sort of scrolling through here so you can see some of their lovely photos who are all at different stages of parenthood, have their own studios perhaps, or maybe working as a dance artist, lots of uh, variety there, but all coming out with similar themes 
of the extreme resilience and courage and determination it takes to continue your career uh, being a parent. And um, as much as I'm an advocate for it and promote it, that's not to deny how difficult it is um, and challenging it in the climate. So I invite you absolutely to um, maybe have a link, uh, look um, back to that link and also to Chloe's um, previous article. Um, at the moment in the kind of realms of um, dance, and I'm just gonna move to a slightly different homepage now. Um, so um, we've got Parents in and Carers in Performing Arts, which is an organization that uh, came about in 2017, originally founded by um, Anna and Cassie from a theater background, but crosses um, uh, dance, music and theater. And they've started to, look at theatre and interrogating uh, the sector in terms of uh, organisational support and working conditions and developed a best practice charter which was then rolled out and moved across into music and then very recently they have appointed Dr Angela Pickard or Professor Angela Pickard as I should say she's just been promoted at um, Christchurch Canterbury University who's leading on some research with them at this very moment um, in developing a dance best practice charter which goes very much from an organisational perspective and you'll see um, there inviting uh, the charter partners there they have an array of established organizations who have signed up to that charter um, which is is fantastic and um, really is progressively looking at job shares you might have seen in the news things like um, leading roles in the west end uh, becoming job shares particularly um, stage crew and the challenges uh, around uh, those working practices and being a parent, particularly with a lot of antisocial hours, et cetera, um, looking into all of those things. And then in terms of how that translates across into the other um, artistic sectors. So definitely worth um, keeping an eye, following Pippa and, and keeping an eye on that um, perspective. To go a little wider than that, um, uh, as Louise kindly said, I'm part of Active Pregnancy Foundation, um, who uh, became a charity over the pandemic. They're not even one as a charity yet, um, but they have been founded by Dr. Marlies De Vivo, who is also based at um, Canterbury and uh, double uh, world Guinness record holding adventurer Sally Kettle um, and they have a variety of different activities and campaigns that's looking at uh, supporting active uh, pregnancy and uh, postnatal activity for all mums in general and um, brilliantly I've, I've come to this page because it's very difficult to find images, realistic images of women uh, being active. So they launched a campaign called Real Mums Are Role Models um, with this um, frustratingly um, aspirational image that we all got a bit cross about um, in terms of how uh, mums are, there's this expectation in the media that we can do our arabesque on a skateboard, carrying the shopping and our child and be pregnant all at the same time um, and trying to move away from that. And what it's rendered is, I think there were 250 um, applicants taking part and we've got some now brilliant images um, and competition winners there to um, start creating a, ba a better bank of images uh, to be used um, by a variety of organizations. They also have um, or are developing um, uh, kind of a portal that's looking at all the research that's going on for pre and postnatal. Again, this is talking about the general population, but something that is something that you really should take in <laughs> is there is little to none evidence based uh, advice or research, well, research really, um, on dance, professional dance and being a parent uh, physically, um, which is something that Dance Mama is working on and we'll come to that a little bit later. Um, so we have to look to other sectors, mainly sports, 
Um, there's a return to running guidelines by um, Gronier Donnelly and uh, physio mum Emma Brockwell, which is incredibly useful um, to try and translate that information across to dance where it, it doesn't currently um, exist. So that, that's kind of uh, fr uh, frustrating, but a great opportunity for us to advance forward as a sector. Um, really, Dance Mama comes from a perspective of individual support, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about how I um, started Dance Mama and how it came about, but really I felt to continue being resilient and courageous and um, keep going, you need to be inspired and you also need to have role models and see other people um, advancing in their careers as parents um, and, and increase visibility. And when I was pregnant, I was fortunate to have people around me that I knew who were parents and successfully cracking on with their career. But I was very acutely aware that might not be everybody and um, we'll come a little bit more, more to that later. But really it's about empowering the indiv individual. And certainly um, Chloe's work um, with the pregnant dancer has a similar um, sort of uh, lens in which um, she's really used this project to interrogate what can happen in the studio um, as a parent in terms of your maternal body and how you can be uh, supported through your, your training or in the studio uh, choreographically um, and physically in, in that way, which has rendered some brilliant resources, including her report um, and also some the, the videos of the classes that they developed, which are, are, are fantastic. Um, but speaking to Erin Sanchez, who I know is known to the ISTD and, of course, uh, uh, one of the managers of uh, performance and training at um, One Dance UK, there's very much a, a bit of a time stamp on um, or perceived timestamp that you get to a certain point in your career in sort of your early to mid thirties and then you should hang up your shoes. And um, we're really keen, all of us, all of the people above <laughs> that I've described and um, indeed the ISTD as well to move away from that idea because it's nonsense, basically. And we're hemorrhaging talent. And I don't say that lightly. I know that's quite a dramatic um, uh, proclamation to say, but recent uh, Birkbeck, um, sorry, the PIPA um, uh, COVID study, sorry, the Birkbeck at STAT was also equally as stark, uh, but the Co COVID um, survey that PIPA have delivered have said that seven out of 10 um, practitioners in music, theatre and dance who are parents are reconsidering their careers because of the impact of COVID. And before that, 76% were unable to take up some work opportunities because of childcare um, issues. So we know that we are losing a huge amount of talent. And, and I'm sure those of you um, listening and, and taking this in now and in the future will appreciate all of your years of experience, all of the training and all of the knowledge you have that I feel personally very passionate that it shouldn't just stop because you um, either decide consciously or perhaps unconsciously you, you start a family. And I think that's important to, um, uh, an important point to take away with you as well is there's lots of judgments and there's lots of um, comments and all, all these sorts of things that, that happen. And also sometimes it's not a conscious choice. Um, so to try and be um, as open-minded as possible in terms of how you start a family and what that family makeup looks like it is really important. Um, but on the upside, <laughs> apart from the stark statistics, there is a huge passion and drive uh, across the sector with, with my co fellow colleagues. Um, and for me, having Arts Council funding at the beginning of the year to um, deliver Dance Mum Alive has then uh, spurred me on to co-instigate a international alliance, which is in its zero year. So we're just figuring that out with Dr. Ali Duffy at Texas Tech 
university and then also we started a parenting in dance network um, of which I'm I'm chair and Chloe's uh, secretary at too and that's not an exclusive group that's for anyone working artistically or in a research or advocacy capacity um, with professional um, dancing parents for us to meet on a quarterly basis really relatively informally just to catch up on what developments are happening and also particular hot topics that we want to try and push forward as well as getting in uh, guest speakers etc so please if you identify as, as one of those um, colleagues please do get in touch that would be great and I'll make sure I put my um, email in the uh, in the chat later so that that's really exciting and I, I think it's important as well to really recognize who I feel are the pioneers um, that are working on this is also Charlotte Vincent and Vincent Dance Theatre have done an incredible amount of work and research with a landmark research paper with Helen Laws uh, about 11 years ago uh, with One Dance UK and then the work of Sonia Rafferty um, and Amanda Goff when I was training a <laughs> hundred years ago um, uh, and they kind of really sprang out to me uh, across my career just in generally as people who were really championing um, women in dance and that's not to say there aren't others. Um, Rosie Kay uh, very recently has been one of the first artists to go back on tour with her absolute solo too and Rosie is a big a big friend of um, Dance Mama and indeed her comment about how she used the site spurred me on to leave a full-time uh, or an employee's role to continue Dance Mama. Um, and in Absolute Solo 2, she has a final section, which is called Adult Female Dancer, which is all about her uh, becoming a mother and embracing um, her, her new and improved body. Um, and we'll get we'll get on to to those uh, bits um, right away. So I'm going to go back to my presentation um, now. We're we'll just back to the slides. Give you some visuals. So just to recap, where are we now? We've got um, some articles brilliantly from the ICD, and I know um, there's a tremendous amount of work going on with the organisation under the fantastic guidance of um, Ginny Brown in lots of um, uh, topic areas such as. Um, race and gender and I know there's the LGBTQIA plus think tank which is fantastic so really um, pushing on, on these issues as well as that increased energy across those organized uh, organizations I've mentioned and then that empowerment and support from um, Dance Mama and the Pregnant Dancer and then the creation of the Parenting in Dance Network or the PIDN PIDN is less less attractive than Parenting in Dance Network. So let's get to those areas of change. So when you become a parent, uh, for those of you who are listening and are either on your way to that or already there, um, or might have been there for some years, I kind of look at the three, uh, through that lens of three specific areas of how it affects our physiology, our psychology and our creativity. And um, those are kind of the main uh, buckets of focus, really, of uh, where we need increased support to acknowledge and celebrate those changes, but ensure that they have the right support for people to continue in the workplace. In terms of physiology, so as I've mentioned, we're, there are moves afoot in terms of um, increasing the research on this front, um, but the best um, uh, resource we have at the moment that's dance specific is this I don't know if you can still see me um, but the safe dance practice textbook which I will wave at you at the end as well uh, where there is part of a, a chapter there on supporting the pre and, and post natal dancer and specifically looking at um, con physical conditions that occur in the body and those main ones are lordosis or lower curvature of, uh, of the lumbar spine, kyphosis or forward head, which obviously comes from um, feeding and carrying, pubis symphys, which is the loosening of the, the joints in the pelvis, which can be very, very painful, um, diastasis recti, of which I 
and one of those people, which is abdominal uh, muscle separation, um, which for me, uh, I'm going to get super vulnerable with you now, um, about lots of different things, was a, a four-fingered gap. Um, clinically, if it's back to one finger, um, then by NHS standards, you're good to go. But we know um, as dancers, our core function is hugely uh, vital to our, our, our success uh, and safety physically. So um, rehabilitation on that is a big one. And then carpal tunnel syndrome, particularly if you're working in a dance style like contemporary or flying low or breaking, where you or jazz indeed or musical theatre or lots of them actually where where we need to use the floor and put the weight into our hands those are just a few anecdotally I'm then hearing um, some stories of dislocated ribs in forward folds when going back into the studio and breastfeeding because if you can when you're breastfeeding and you continue to breastfeed you've got increased uh, hormone called relaxin which increases the flexibility in your joints. Conversely, we're then getting reports of individuals who will then go for their, you have, usually have a six week check or um, uh, with either your healthcare practitioner, a doctor or your midwife or one of the care team where they um, don't understand the full range of movement a professional might have anyway. <laughs> Um, thinking that it's the relaxing affecting it and that they should be um, working to a lower range of movement and lots of confusion, misinformation, um, some are artists or individuals being told they should never dance again, or these kind of um, absolutes with actually no empirical evidence um, to say that, that, that they shouldn't uh, because there isn't a dance-based study. Um, so lots of um, interesting things there. Um, and then in terms of um, psychology, uh, dance obviously is a huge part of our identity um, and there's a tendency in the dance population towards perfectionism, which um, if it's not already incongruent with just real life anyway, um, is even more incongruent with the chaotic nature of being a parent which can be really unhelpful. And that kind of black and white thinking um, it, at times can be very, very um, unhelpful um, and, and, and not, uh, not very good at all. And also unhealthy self-esteem issues. And then this notion, which relates back to the physiology of getting your body back, which is total and utter rubbish. <laughs> Um, and it's not about getting your body back or reclaiming it, because unless you're dead, you haven't left it. Um, it's now new and improved. And in fact, what has been brilliant about linking up with sports um, uh, sectors and uh, the talk we have on Dance Mama Live with Dr. Steve Ingham, it's absolutely worth a listen on this. Um, he was Dame Jess Ennis Hill's physiologist uh, throughout most of her career, um, but particularly around 2016 with her winning a world title and um, a silver medal at Rio uh, postnatal is how they use the positive uh, changes in her body to help her train and achieve um, those goals, such as increased blood volume, um, helps with your endurance. So she had what's called a normal birth and a normal pregnancy. Again, I say that in inverted commas because that's up for debate, um, but she was able to return to walking training um, a week after she had had her baby. Now, I'm not advocating that for everybody. That's a very specific example of an athlete who had a team of five, including a GP in, in that group. So very, very specific. However, does it confidently bust this myth that once you have given birth, you're over the hill and that's the end? Uh, yes, it certainly does. And of course, in, in the Olympics that we've just had, we've seen um, Helen Greaves, um, who's had three children um, achieve um, similar um, uh, 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 
<laughs> similar brilliant things. Um, so they, there's all those sorts of things um, going on. Um, and then in terms of creativity, the impact of uh, your re reduction in time, because obviously being a parent is quite time consuming, and also sleep deprivation, which affects um, uh, both the father and the mother and parent, however they wish to identify themselves. Um, really impacts on your cognitive ability and time and space to be creative. So it's then looking at how you can use the time that you have when you're with your child to be creative and again fostering that creativity in them and in, in that practice but also trying to find uh, time and ways of carving out time for yourself which is um, really important and then we're back to a big central issue of affordable childcare which is a very difficult complicated uh, part of the puzzle particularly particularly in a sector where the wages are generally not very high comparatively to other sectors that then have fantastic re-entry programs if you're at you know PwC or any of those kind of uh, Accenture or somewhere like that um, those big kind of business corporate um, side of things um, but for dance that that is really challenging um, so those are just a few things to, to think about. So just to kind of recap on that, we've got a huge lack of research and evidence. Uh, and uh, So we're taking that guidance from sport. There's lots of known unknowns <laughs> in that respect. And I'm sure there's plenty of unknown unknowns. Um, in terms of the psychology, again, that lack of research um, feeds in there. Um, and all the identity issues and that pressure to return to work physically as well is, is a big one. And we'll, we'll hear that a little bit later in um, Chloe's film from, from some of her participants. And then creativity, again, having the um, mindset actually to be creative as well as the time and, and space um, it is also a, a particular issue there. Um, so I'm going to tell you if I can as briefly as possible, which is not always easy for me, and just to kind of invite you to pop questions in, in the chat and we'll, we'll come to those um, in a little bit, is just to tell you a bit more about Dance Mama. So I'm very uh, grateful that uh, fairly early on uh, we were uh, named Unique and Vital Resource uh, by One Dance UK. Um, now uh, we've actually got now over 60 case studies and that's really how it started. So when I became pregnant with my eldest child, I was um, freelancing and I was teaching one bear on the class program. And I was very lucky to have a fantastic boss who's now you some of you may know and has moved to Sadler's Wells um, called Joss Giles and he saw the opportunity of giving a teaching assistant role to um, uh, the, the, in the puzzle picture to help for me to mentor that teaching assistant as well as me having support in the studio and I think not only is this down to Joss's um, brilliance and lovely personality and being an excellent human uh, but also fortuitously his wife was pregnant um, at pretty much the same time as me and we were all bets on as to who whether we'd be on the same day or but we actually turned out to be within a week of, it, of each other so he was in a similar place from the father's perspective the, the whole way way through um, and around that time as well I was <laughs> slightly known as the fertility stick at the place because everybody who sat opposite me became pregnant so I worked with at least four or five colleagues over my six years at the place prior um, who had become pregnant in their roles and taken maternity leave and returned or, or, or changed around so I had lots of role models around me um, to look at and also over my first pregnancy going back to the Olympics I and mean, all roads back to Athens um, but London 2012 this time um, I was being mentored choreographically um, by um, Kerry Nichols who also was giving me support within that from her experience being a parent so I then became a, a, a mum 
and uh, as a freelancer, which was far more scary and instable than the second time around when I was in an employed role. And I felt passionately about talking about the fact that there was a brilliant and still is a brilliant fact sheet from One Dance UK, um, which gives lots of support, but nothing really when you've gone through the other side. It felt like a huge chasm. So in writing this article, I did a lot of research and spoke to lots of different colleagues, uh, pretty much in the same way as doing the ISTD article, to be honest, at different stages of parenthood, different family setups. And really it was their stories that I felt needed sharing. So I put them on a website and kind of just kept it ticking along in the background and carried on with my LMP career and thought, obviously thought about it, but didn't really think about it too much until it was Rosie Kay who said, wow, your site's really helped me just give a reference point so I can work out um, how I'm going to do this and, and what I'm going to do. So that started to kind of go, mm, OK, maybe, you know, there's a bit more in this. And as things developed at, at Rombert, I then became manager of LMP. Um, I then became pregnant with my son. Joss moved on to Sadler's Wells and um, I applied for the step up to his role. Um, again, this is sounds crazy when you're not in the dance sector. Um, but I did that interview when my son was eight days old, uh, following watching uh, Suffragette, I think, of just seeing, um, uh, you know, what can be done with very little opportunity um, and uh, was pleased that I was offered the role of head, head of learning as a job share, um, which I, I did with Julia Fitzell, which was a fantastic experience and the first time uh, the organization had, had done that. And while that was kind of in play again, um, the first year of my, my mat leave, um, I was helping write the MPO, but then when I came back, I was kind of frustrated that nothing really had moved on. Then Pippa, came into, into play for, da for dance more in particular. And then I felt like actually, this is where I'm needed. Nobody's got their eyes on this. There was, we are losing so many people. And um, as some of you know, who some of you, I don't know, I can't see you, but some of you might know me that I'm really passionate about uh, the transformative aspect of dance and how it can really help people's lives in a very real way way other than just you know what you see on, on stage and this is where I felt I could be of some use. So I left um, Ron Bear in 2018 and with all of that information um, decided how I was going to strategize Dance Mama. So what we now offer um, and Dance Mama Live is kind of a, a big one, is we have the site and the story. So there's always always somewhere to go and, and have a look back to and, and, and see what's going on. Um, across the sector in lots of different roles, lots of different backgrounds, and that's now morphed over the pandemic into a podcast. Because again, I'm interested in access and I listen to a lot of podcasts doing the washing and on the school run. Um, and I know other people would enjoy having access to that information too that way. Uh, research um, and information. So we have like an information hub on the site that you can go to and, and read up all about that. Um, we have the community and social aspects. So building up um, the social media profile, which I've pretty much been doing since the get go, but we have quite um, an active um, following there, which is great, which reaches globally around um, 5,000, which is modest in comparison to these big influencers, but it's not too bad for dance. And then workshops and mentoring. And just to kind of um, round up on that before we move on to um, Chloe's is to talk briefly about Dance Mum Alive. So originally that was supposed to be in person and we did a pilot in person at Sadler's Wells in partnership with them. But obviously, as we all know, the pandemic hit and we pivoted to see how we could do it online. And actually having an online offer has always been there for Dance Mama in terms of curating uh, content of classes that you can access because trying to find decent content on a nap at the will of your baby's timing schedule and not your own is not always easy. So I pulled all of that and curated that information together probably um, at the beginning of 2019. Uh, so when the pandemic hit, that was a good resource that people could use, but then actually developing something um, 
uh, live, what I felt was missing because we have all got probably enough common sense and knowledge to modify what we do in classes, the emergency gap was around um, recent information across sport, um, psychology and other sectors, as well as dance, as well as having access to other artists and uh, workshops in that way. So the programme runs on a monthly basis, just for two hours, so super low commitment. You don't even have to come live, you can watch a replay. Um, and it, that's funded through Arts Council England, so it's free. And the types of artists we've had so far on the programme include Alita Collins, Gemma Nixon, um, I might show you a little bit of Etta Murphit, Again, trying to get the, you know, the, our real role models of um, parents, um, uh, women especially, to deliver um, those sessions. We've also had Nuna Sandy, again, trying to mix up the dance styles um, too, um, is, is what's going on with that. So it really exists, as we know, to serve dancing families. Um, I've thrown you some of those horrific stats. I'm not going to um, keep over laboring the points, but they do kind of add fuel to our, our fire, shall we say. But there's also noticeably fewer female choreographers. Um, the social isolation side of being a parent has only been amplified by uh, the pandemic. And about 80% of us, of, of the 40,000 strong industry, are women and also Chloe in a minute will talk about her stats on um, interest in, be in becoming a mother um, with the dancers and participants she spoke to. Uh, there's some lovely feedback there from um, Dance Mum Alive, which is quite long, so I won't um, go over all of that. But basically, that particular participant was having a really low morning, felt like throwing in the towel. And then to be in a space with other people having a similar experience um, and moving again really helped reignite um, her, her love for dance and interest of, of re-entering back into the workspace, which is brilliant and exactly what it's designed to do. And I'm, I'm very grateful that um, we've been absolutely on point with that. Um, and over 2020, uh, my question to myself was, how can I serve? So we talked about some of those um, issues uh, and events that have come up um, over 2020 of how we can actually use a really tight spot um, and see what opportunities are, are there uh, to develop and increase um, uh, our audience, but also the number of women going back and, and considering going back into work. So what we're doing now, there's me wistfully looking and trying to look inspired, um, is we continue with Dance Mum Alive online um, through the rest of the year. We'll be opening up, up again. It's totally free, but the registration for that is uh, September the 1st. We also have a mentoring program. Uh, Chloe and I wish to, to develop CPD for employees and employers, which she also will talk about in minutes. Um, and then looking at, uh, with, look, on the case with research and development for postnatal rehab programs, as well as obviously developing as an organisation ourselves. So lo lots to do there. Um, I'll move quickly to uh, Chloe um, and make sure that um, you get a good listen to um, Chloe's work. So let me just whiz it back. Hopefully the sound is okay. Let me just um, see you so you can give me a thumbs up. Okay. My shock, uh, the first, my first pregnancy and, and that um, realization that, wow, like the dance world is just so not set up for motherhood. Mm. This is impossible. How, I, it's, there's no way of me getting to class. I can't bring a child. How do I? This, the cost of that is extortionate because you pay for childcare on top of the class, on top of the travel. Like it's, it's really was an impossible, it felt an impossible thing. Uh, navigated my way through that. Um, and so to have someone who is interested and in researching and promoting the possibility of motherhood and dance existing together, I think is fantastic. Um, like make it okay for me to go and do that yoga class at 6 30 or make it okay for me to do that so that mm. i could get my body back into the shape it needed to be to earn money mm. but mm. i don't know if other people have that support and we have a lot of friends from our birthing groups that are in different um lines of work 
and some of them are in really sort of traditional roles like the mum's at home the whole time Mm -hmm. and the dad has gone off back to work after a week and a half have a space where a pregnant dancer can exist and uh, be celebrated rather than sacked or any of those things um, yeah it's mm. huge and really really valuable yeah really really valuable so thank you yeah brilliant hello my name is Zoe. i'm the founder and director of the pregnant dancer project this is a research project commissioned by Arts Council England and it exists to create a contemporary dance technique that caters for pregnant and postpartum bodies. Dancers rely on their bodies to work and pregnancy can take away their ability to earn a living. As far as I'm aware, there are limited professional dance classes for pregnant and postpartum women to take. My research has shown that 47 out of 50 artists have or want to have children and they have all expressed a want for these classes to exist. We are always looking for artists to work with. So if you're pregnant, postpartum, or an artist who wants to add their style to the maternal design, please get in touch. Dance Mama and the Pregnant Dancer will create a best practice CPD pilot on the topic of safeguarding maternal dances. This project is in collaboration with One Dance UK. The CPD is a resource for dance practitioners who wish to gain a better understanding of the physiological changes that occur during the maternal period. What's more, we're designing a CPD that's specifically tailored to teach dance practitioners about the unique needs a pregnant or postnatal dancer has physically during this time. This research aims to be wholly inclusive of parents from all backgrounds. Due to the biological changes that occur during pregnancy, our research is aimed at those who have the ability to carry and birth a child. Right, I'll just stop stop that there. So thanks uh, so much, Chloe, for that in spirit. Um, absolutely. And Chloe has got the, the videos of um, those classes that are now available. Um, if you follow uh, Chloe on Instagram, we can get that to you or find that or just look for the pregnant dancer. You'll be able to, to find those resources and we'll be putting those onto Dance Mama as well, well to share those. I think a development as well that has occurred um, over the last few months as well is that uh, Dance Mama 2 has uh, live classes that will be returning in September. We piloted those in June um, uh, and therefore the general public as well as uh, professionals. Uh, so we've developed those with um, Laura Harvey, who's also head of creative programmes at English National Ballet. Laura and I worked together for many years at Ron Bear and also at ENB on Dance for Parkinson. So we've sort of come to it um, through that dance and health lens really. And Laura's devised some fantastic content for those sessions, uh, which includes seated and standing um, exercises. And don't focus on the fact that you're a parent. Um, they're there to, for you to have fun and enjoy um, moving as well as some great, um, great music to dance to, but also having some social time. And again, that, that was really we've carried through from our knowledge of working with different um, specific populations from a, a dance and health perspective, also with uh, work we will have done in the past with Dr. Daisy Fancourt. And with that, we worked with um, Breathe at Chelsea and Westminster uh, Hospital uh, Arts and Health Research, who have a Melodies for Mums choir, postnatal choir, which Dr. Daisy Fancourt wrote a white paper about um, the positive effects of singing on uh, patients with postnatal depression, which is um, really fantastic. And I think there are six nationally, which is really exciting. And then the classes for professionals are with Lucy Balfour, who you saw right at the beginning on my presentation. Again, where we work together at Romba, there's a theme. Um, and those are more Cunningham, uh, a hybrid of Cunningham and ballet based um, classes, again, for professionals where we help cue the modifications that you might be needing to think about rather than going to a standard class online or in person and having to do that for yourself uh, with as much common sense as possible because there isn't any specific guidance and that's something as well that we're working towards um, in uh, creating that and in doing that Dance Mum has a research advisory group uh, which contains some of our well-known dance scientists like Dr Emma Redding and um, Adele Quinn but also medics um, and midwives so we can really uh, be confident with what we're delivering um, is safe and effective. Um, so 
really, I think we wanted to round off and I'm a minute over, so I'll keep it as brief as possible. I think I've done quite well because I usually like to chat. Um, is it's really needed. Um, the gap is really to, to, to some of us, very, very obvious. And there needs to be not only a shift in the attitudes of, of the parents themselves and giving that empowerment to, to continue going, but of course, uh, to the industry itself on its attitudes and being able to um, recruit and support and retain uh, talent as those individuals move into, into parenthood. And we, get, we have some fantastic examples of how that's been delivered. New Adventures is one, Hoffa Schechter is another, but there's sadly some not so great examples or that people don't even realize it's a thing. Um, so what we are inviting to do after we've had a bit of time for, for questions um, is to do a bit of a poll to see if there's a taster. We believe there is so much knowledge that needs to be imparted on this uh, in CPD, uh, but whether that's something that perhaps um, you guys might um, enjoy and uh, see the value in that, in either supporting yourself or uh, employees in your care. So I'll, I'll round off with that, really. But thank you um, so much so, so far for, for listening. And uh, we'll see if we can take some questions. Yeah, please do feel free to uh, put some questions in the Q&A for reflections or anything you've got, Lucy, here and all of that knowledge. If there's anything you would like to comment upon, now's your opportunity to do so. I'm just seeing Hannah's uh, comment about the getting your body back narrative drives us crazy. Uh, absolutely. I think there's some really unhelpful um, media narratives around that, um, particularly Kardashians are one, one example. Um, usually I'm a big old fan of Kate and Wills, but again, you know, Kate on the on the steps, a mere few, you know, looks like nothing's happened, um, which I found really frustrating, actually. I thought she might um, might use it as a, an opportunity to um, to help us all out, um, but it was a bit of a missed opportunity. I think Megan got in there with, with, with that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really unhelpful. And the thing is, there are then other people in the media, like Paloma Faith, who, as we know, obviously is famed for, for singing and, and acting, but, but trained at Northern School of Contemporary Dance, who talks absolutely about how the changes in her rib cage, particularly in the expansion of that, have really helped um, her singing the, and the richness and the, just the richness of the experience of being a parent. That life experience gives you so much more of a treasure trove to draw from, whether that's creatively or in terms of leadership um, as a parent or in your workspace, um, which should be really celebrated. And it's really frustrating and infuriating that it's kind of um, pushed to the side. We also know that there's other individuals I've spoken to who, don't, who perhaps don't want to share their stories, which is fine, but more that they've hidden the fact that they're a parent or felt that they've had to do that to get ahead. And again, that is, um, I find wildly um, frustrating and just playing into all of those negative um, narratives, which is, which is really unhelpful. But yeah, um, your body's not gone anywhere. You're still in it. <laughs> um, so I don't, know if, I don't know if there's any more questions. I've got 10 minutes. It's a bit quiet out there today. It's quiet. I mean, I think it's incredibly helpful, Lucy, because to know that there is the support there, because I know that when I had my children, there was there was nothing. Um, so it's incredibly helpful to, to know that there are people you can contact. Yeah, but again, we are we're doing stuff, but it's still piecemeal. Um, and there's there's only one of me. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, there's Chloe as well, um, uh, championing this particularly for dance. And obviously, Pippa too. I know one. You guys have, have got a fantastic agenda about supporting supporting parents. And indeed, Ginny is a dance mama her, herself and has that that understanding. But yes, yeah, somebody. Um, uh, uh, sorry, um, Hammer. Sorry, has also put in, in chat too. 
um, about tailored to working dancers. And um, yes, there's a focus on that. For Dance Mama particularly, there's not that focus in that way. It's not just for performers. In the whole cohort for Dance Mama Live, we have 80 women and they traverse, yes, there are some performers, but they are also teachers, rehearsal directors, company managers, choreographers, because when you're teaching, you need to, <laughs> as a colleague once, uh, probably not, not so PC put it, need to be fit for purpose. Um, you've got to be able to uh, feel confident and move in your body to be able to express those ideas and support um, your students. So absolutely Dance Mama Live is not just for performers, it is, is for teachers too. And I would absolutely say with Chloe's resources as well, they're there as a class and we should all be uh, striving when we're teaching to be taking class for ourselves now and again, because when we're giving, we need to really make sure um, that we um, nourish our, ourselves um, because, um, and particularly, um, as dancing parents, because your family is um, sucking your energy, <laughs> work sucking your energy, um, you need to make sure, and I know it's a bit of a buzzword and it's getting very knocked around, um, but self-care absolutely mm -hmm. has to be number one and it's not a selfish act, it's, it's absolutely essential to be on your game um, for, for everyone else. Um, thank you for the kind comments, Christina, that's nice. Um, Oh, that's good. Great. Got less fear. Brilliant. Um, is that a distinction? As teachers, it'd be great to bring these ideas standard to our... Yeah. And, and actually, teachers, get in there earlier. <laughs> be visible. Breastfeed in the studio. Do what you need to do. Have your kids around. Have them visible. So your younger dancers, male and female, see it early on and see the possibility. I've been um, in contact with another organization called the Well HQ, and that's two GPs and um, all roads lead back again to Dame Jess, Jess Ennis Hill, um, a physiologist called Dr. Emma Wells, who uh, works on the Genis app. And again, that's a fantastic resource, um, but works on the periodization of uh, using your uh, menstrual cycle and uh, pl planning your fitness training around your cycle, which we're just starting now to begin to see happen in dance. But certainly talking about menstruation right through to menopause is really important because we're wor mainly working with female bodies and this should be talked about. It should be the norm, it shouldn't be hidden. And in terms of the uh, menopause side of things, we've then got fantastic um, people like uh, Elmhurst. Um, Jess, head teacher there, has written um, policy around uh, menopause and supporting staff, which is absolutely fantastic. And mm. I think it's getting in there early with the students and feeding them this information um, that it is um, completely uh, possible. Um, how vast is the syllabus of exercises videos that Chloe's got on Instagram? I think she's probably, I think it's about eight to 10. Um, so I would check that out. And yes, I think it's possible for pre and post natal, and there will just be particular adaptation for, for each stage. I think if you feel worried and you want to be reassured a little bit more on that, I would read her report. I know that might be a bit um, bedtime reading and I know she's um, we're, we're thinking about how we can make that more into bite sized bite chunks per se, but I would have a look at that. And then in terms of the classes for Dance Mama, absolutely, they are uh, pre and, uh, and postnatal for the general public. At the moment, we've got um, postnatal for professionals, but we'll look at, at, at prenatal as well. But we're not we wouldn't turn anybody away. <laughs> and we've got that knowledge and understanding of no and and again it's trying to get move away from feel how do you feel in your body la, 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 la. And, and and that just being it without saying actually you can do a small amount of twisting but you just have to you know go within your your uh, reduce your range of movement and and things like things like that um, because the key thing isn't it for everybody is safety everybody just wants to make sure that they're safe and bump is safe but there's a lot of focus on that prenatal and far less postnatal 
and particularly diastasis recti on the blog, um, we've got Neve Morin from the Research Advisory Group, who's a performance um, specialist for dance as well as a dance scientist. She's written, written a fantastic blog because the first time I had it, I had NHS um, rehab. The second time I didn't, which wasn't helpful at all. Um, and I had to go privately. And again, the cost attached to that. Um, but um, I was then told I could never do straight sit-ups again, or I couldn't hold plank. And actually that's a myth as long as you understand the uh, anatomy down there and what, where things are firing, it is possible to go back to some of those more traditional abdominal exercises, but knowing that you're doing it supported and not doming and un understanding that and working with an exercise professional always in healthcare um, to, um, to really um, support, support you in that. There was something else I was going to say on that, and I think it's um, gone. Uh, do you provide some courses where dancers can learn how to work with women in their special time? Well, that is exactly what we want to do. And uh, we'll be putting up a poll um, just before the end where, uh, Christina, you will be able to say, yes, please, yes, please. Um, and that is absolutely coming. And Chloe is beginning her PhD at Queen's University Belfast in September um, under Dr. Eva McGraw, who also is leading specialist globally on dance. Her project's called Dance and the Maternal. Um, there, there's a lot of fantastic work there that, again, we want to be able to pull this information into more tangible, um, edible chunks uh, so we can digest them and make, not projectile vomit, but make sure that everybody, um, uh, you know, has the, the latest information and doesn't feel like they have to quit. You don't have to quit. But that said, it's not easy. It isn't easy and having the support around you of peers, colleagues, family, friends, that's another big one, which I'll try and finish off on because I know we've got, only got a couple of minutes, is your social capital is a real issue because if you've gone to train professionally, it doesn't matter where your career goes after that, you have usually left your primary family, your own parents and siblings if you've got them, and moved away so actually when it's your turn the kind the support there to help you uh, is non-existent and you either have to build that up through um, uh, friendship groups or antenatal groups and again there's some challenges around that because you go to a standard antenatal group and you will probably be the only dance person or creative person in there which in itself can be a huge um, challenge especially when you know somebody might be crying about going back to their job in an office and you're desperate to get back in the studio um, uh, that's certainly happened to me um, and just a complete misfire of understanding each other um, so, so that going on but um, again to the ad hoc nature of our, our work uh, particularly if you're or freelance and you haven't got an established pattern with an employer or your own studio or, or, or something like that it's tremendously difficult to, um, to, to engage in your work because you need the time and the space to do it. And I think over the pandemic, we've, re we've been able to work much more flexibly and that's been helpful. And people have been more forgiving about having um, children on screen. Uh, but you'll notice today, mine are not here. <laughs> I've shipped them off to Holiday Club because I feel I want to give you my complete energy in this moment. But if we were in, you know, a studio scenario and, you know, somebody walks in with a child, I'm not going to, you know, bat an eyelid probably or be horrified. And I think there's a fantastic example that Kate Flat has on our podcast of talking about Crystal Pite uh, working at, at the Royal Opera House on flight pattern and having her child in the studio simultaneously with the dancers and being able to work with the dancers and then turn to the child and go, haven't you done a beautiful drawing? well done you know which is amazing we need more of that um so yes you'll have to build your social capital um financially it's not great <laughs> um it's difficult hence dance mum alive a lot of it being scheduled on a weekend because then i know my other half can take the kids and i haven't got to worry about um childcare in that way it's not easy but there are loads of examples on dance mama 
um, for you to see how other people are doing it. And we're constantly talking all the time and striving uh, to make it easier. And in the grander scheme of things, I would definitely say, have a look at Flex Appeal and Anna Whitehouse, the work they're doing, and the quite arrestingly named Pregnant Then Screwed, uh, Joelle Brearley, and all of the amazing work that she does with women who've been discriminated against in uh, work capacity due to um, maternity leave or being pregnant. Um, they've done some amazing work over the pandemic. I'd better stop there. Thank you so much, Lucy. Um, are we going to do a poll now? Oh, yes, please. Is that possible, Mavis? Thank you. Oh, Mavis, look at that. I'll just pop that there. Just give it a couple more seconds for everyone to complete the poll. Good, I can't vote. <laughs> I wonder what I'd say. Can you see that? Yeah, see that? lovely. Take a little snapshot of that. Great. Great. Well, Lucy, thank you so much for what has been an amazingly rich session. There's so many bits of support there, of leads of things. There's so much there for people to, to be able to get into and there's so many links through your chat as well so thank you so much it has been fantastic and I wonder whether perhaps you can come back next year and give us some updates and where you're at with it and uh, yes, perhaps some uh, you know perhaps we can look at some movement that might help people but it has been uh, a really fantastic session today so thank you to you and also to Chloe for this uh, wonderful session and we wish you all the best with it I'm so glad somebody's campaigning for this and, and taking it forward it's a, a fantastic thing for us to have Thank you for supporting the ISTD and, and bringing all of this to us. Um, it's uh, really good to hear what's going on. Thank you. And thank you to the ISTD for um, getting me going in my dance career, as that is how I learned to dance pre Laban. So it all comes full circle, you see. Doesn't it just? <laughs> doesn't it just? Thank you so much, Lucy. And thank you, Mavis, for hosting this today. And thank you to everybody that's been listening. And I hope it's been useful. We've got lots of things in there to link in with and uh, please do contact Lucy if you felt that you wanted to ask a question but you didn't want to do it here in this webinar I'm sure Lucy would be very glad to get your uh, questions that come through so thank you very much for listening everybody we hope you have a lovely evening and we'll see you for the September session when we are speaking to Dr Peter Lovett many thanks to you all bye-bye <laughs>